The Gifted Education Planner is another assessment tool that we can incorporate into our body of evidence. This tool is a criterion reference assessment as it provides a rating of giftedness. This planner includes multiple surveys, one for a parent, one for a teacher, and several for the students. I must caution you though that only the parent and the teacher surveys can be utilized as an indicator or qualifier for giftedness because it actually rates it in the domain of giftedness. All of the student surveys just show whether that student is either motivated or highly motivated in that uh, content area. So be aware that the student surveys are just a helpful body um, evidence piece just to suggest what the student's preference is, but it's not necessarily an indicator to qualify, just to be very clear. Um, also, this packet provides several surveys and inventories included within, but not all of the surveys need to be completed. Just the one designated ones your team needs for review for a potential gifted student. Um, again, this assessment requires parent permission because we don't do the surveys or inventories on all of our students, so we need to obtain that prior to distributing any of these out, even to the teacher. Ratings are stated on each of the forms within, and students who are not fluent readers yet or have some difficulty with the language can have the assessment read to them or even interpreted for them if that is helpful as well. That is totally fine and it doesn't take out any of the accountability, fidelity of the actual assessment. Same thing for a parent. It is perfectly fine to translate any of the document in order for a parent who speaks another native language to be able to complete this for their child. GT representatives should be the only ones to collect, score, and report back to the team on the findings on this document. So one of the things I want to caution you on is the hard copy of the actual packet for the Gifted Education Planner. I'm going to go scooch ahead real quick. On each of these forms, it actually will tell you on the very bottom of the actual form itself that you're not allowed to copy them. So be very aware of this component. It is perfectly fine to make your own form with the questions to give to a parent um, and or to a teacher or to a student. And then once you collect those back, then you can put them into a hard copy planner so that way that you have it all in one place. Another reason why I suggest that is because if you actually provide the packet itself, the blue packet, to a parent or to a teacher or to a student, all of the scoring guides are included within it. So it's not very difficult for one to figure out how they need to score for their child to be considered gifted or for a teacher to consider a student gifted, or even for the student themselves. The reason I caution you on this is it's not because I don't believe that people are going to be accurate in their reporting, but the temptation is there to not be accurate uh, for the actual student themselves. So I think it's really important to not sway a parent or a teacher or even the student into scoring one way or the other if they just don't have the key provided. That's why I suggest creating the forms separately. I've done this both um, in a Word document, but I've also provided it to parents in a Google document as well, a Google form, and it just collects all that information for me, and then I can go ahead and score it. I will be sharing with Becky, with for all of you, an actual spreadsheet that helps with the scoring, and I'll show that to you in just a moment. So I'm going to back up again. Um, so there are, like I said, multiple surveys within it. This is what the parent one looks like. It has where a parent would fill in who their student is, their age, grade, gender, date. And then they're basically going to look at the different behavior or characteristics that are described within the survey and rate their child on a scale of one to four. One meaning that they seldom or never see that behavior or characteristic to a four, which is almost always. In between is a two for sometimes and a three for a regular. So they can just make a little check mark, they can just put the number in the box, whatever is easiest for you for scoring, feel free to do so. Um, the teacher one looks exactly like this one, um, except for instead of a huge description, it just gives just a few words. And again, the teacher will rate it and fill it out exactly the same way. So both the parent and the teacher look very sim similar. 
but of course different ratings, the student forms themselves will be in the different content areas. The student ones, of course, like I said before, can be read to a student, that's not a problem, and it can still be filled out by an adult, that's totally fine. I do wanna caution you though that the rating scale actually flips. So for a student, instead of starting with a one, it actually starts with a four. Um, and a student will say whether that statement about themselves is very true, three would be true, two would be sometimes true, or one would be untrue completely. Again, you don't want to give them the actual uh, sheet itself because, again, the scoring is on the bottom. But I just wanted to point out for the student one, their scores are just going to state whether they're motivated. So any score that comes between a 2.67 to a 3.33 just shows that they're motivated. Any score between a 3.34 to a 4 is considered highly motivated. So just be aware of that. And then I'm going to go back up to the teacher because the teacher's rating, actually this is a parent, excuse me, the parent rating will give five different subscales based off the rating. And as you can see here, it's a little complicated to score this by hand because you have to look at certain numbers and then divide by a certain number. Uh, but what it will provide for you is a subscale for intellectual, academic, creative, social, and artistic for the parent. And then the teacher one looks like this, where it provides a subscale for academic learning strengths, personal strengths, and social strengths. Be aware that both on the parent and the teacher surveys, you don't have to have um, all of these within the range, the mean range of 3.34 to 4.0 for gifted identification. It could just be that that student has a strong academic learning strength, but personal strength might just be an, a strength or an average ability, and that's okay. It's not going to keep them from being identified. So it's not a composite. They don't have to have every single one of them. They could just have one or two, and that's okay. That just goes into that body of evidence. Again, the student ones are different. So let me show you what that scoring guide looks like. So the scoring guide looks like this. Uh, you just put in the student's name, parent name, for example, because this one's the parent inventory. And then you just put in the number for what the parent rated the student on. One of the things that I did at the very end is I've made it very great that you don't have to worry about how to calculate everything. Everything's pre-calculated into formulas within the Excel document. So I created as a test run on the first one is just to test. So I put in numbers for gifted Joe. And so the scores would show that anything that highlights in green is considered to be an area of domain of giftedness. Anything that's yellow is just considered a strength. And if it's not highlighted at all, it's just basically just an average rating or a low rating. And I've made the key over on each side so that you can be aware of that. The formulas and everything are for about 100 students, so keep that in mind that if you go past 100, the formulas themselves on the spreadsheet will not continue. Um, you can either reopen up a new planning scoring sheet and then put more uh, students in, or you can copy and paste, but you have to copy these formulas exactly the way they are in order to get the ratings the same way. There's the teacher one, and the teacher one is set up exactly the same way. There's attitudes about school and learning for the student, reading and language for a student, math, science, social studies, and then about the arts. In the back part of the packet, it also provides some more surveys and interest forms for you to collect if you want to, completely optional, but it's really great in order to give some of these because that way you can utilize it in your programming and offerings. One of my favorite, and it is included on here, is giving to a student how they like to learn. What's really great about this survey is that after a student rates themselves, it'll actually indicate how that student likes to learn best. For example, Gift Joe likes lectures, obviously, because it's in a strong preference area. But he does still like peer learning, independent study, game, and competitions. Obviously, low ratings for him. He's not really excited about drill and practice. Um, projects, somewhat okay, self-instruction. So you can see what their actual learning preference is when it comes to different ways that we can instruct them, which is just, again, a really great tool for programming and using that in your body of evidence. Again, this will do not qualify a student for giftedness based off of this survey. It just gives you more information about the student. There are more things that are in the back that don't have that type of scoring, but it's just more things to collect information. So you can certainly check those out and see what works best for you. 
But I overall really love the Gifted Education Planner because there's so much included in this to gather information and collect inventory and data collection for your students. If you have any questions or any concerns on how to score or how to administer or things like that for this planner, feel free to give Becky a call or you can even contact myself, Natalie Brown, at natalie.brown.03 at gmail.com or you can reach me on my cell phone, which is 719-251-7746. Thanks and have a great day.